Getting started with DNA research can feel overwhelming. People ask, how do I interpret my results? First, interpreting and using DNA test results to grow your family tree is not about ethnicity estimates. Rather, it's about the relationships we share with one another and how we came to share DNA. RootsFinder offers some great visualization tools that will make it easier for you to understand what your DNA test results mean and how to use them to grow your family tree. There are three basic steps to this process. One, start with what you know. Two, identify what you want to know. And three, research. Analyze the evidence and keep notes. As you can see, interpreting DNA results for genetic genealogy is a lot like researching your family tree with paper sources. So let's take step one. Start with what you know. According to the DNA testing company, this is a list of people who share a significant amount of DNA with me. I imported this particular list from Ancestry, but testing companies all provide mostly the same basic information. I get the username of my match, the total amount of DNA we share, and a relationship estimate which was calculated by the company based on the amount of shared DNA. But now, what do I do with this? How does this help me? To answer these questions, the first thing I want to do is to match the people on this list to a mutual ancestor in my tree wherever possible. I'm going to begin my research by defining my edges, identifying people I know. For example, I happen to know who Sue223 is, and she's in my tree, anonymized as Susan B. Anthony, just for this video. So I tag her, and now RootsFinder can map her relationship to me. Now that I've matched Sue to my tree, she gets a color code related to her position in my tree. She's on my dad's side here, color-coded blue. I can click here in the fan chart where our mutual ancestor is highlighted to see what I already know about our common ancestors. The gold stars are sources, so I can see at a glance if this line has been well-researched or not. The green circles show suggestions, so I can see if there are hints I should review for this line. I'm going to keep working through my list to tag people. I don't need to tag everyone. I just start with some easy answers. For example, B. Pitt is my cousin on my mom's side, but I'm not 100% sure where exactly right now. So I just put him as a descendant of Herman and Nola, and the same with Shirley Temple. I think she's just on my grandma's side, so I'm putting her in that family line. This little tree icon here means the user has a tree at the testing company, so I can look for our mutual ancestor in their tree. If I can't see where they fit right away, that's okay. I'll just skip them for now. Right now, I want to go through this list of relatives the DNA company gave me and tag people to my tree if I know how they fit. This gives me a framework I can start with. Let's go back to Sue223. In her kit information over here on the right, I see the details the testing company has made available to me, which I can edit or augment. So I can add surnames here, notes with keywords, a contact history, etc. So I can easily find them again later. Now that I have some easy answers identified, I'm going to use one of RootsFinder's most powerful tools for interpreting DNA results, the filter. Filters allow me to work with related data easily. I can limit the kits displayed by genetic distance, relationship, or keywords. For example, Sue223, my closest match, is on my dad's side. By putting her kit name in the matches to include filter and setting the degree of separation to one degree of separation, I can limit my list to see only other people who are directly related to her based on our DNA results. Zero degrees would give me just Sue. One degree limits my list to those who also share DNA with Sue. I could expand the list by increasing the degrees of separation. Allowing two degrees of separation from Sue would filter my list to 1,039 kits, some of them indirectly related to Sue223 because they share DNA with Sue's matches, but not with Sue. Three degrees of separation would expand the list to 1,206 kits, giving me even more kits indirectly related to Sue because they share DNA with the matches of Sue's matches. But that's getting a little far out on a limb. I want to start with what I absolutely know. I'm related to Sue. So taking the degree of separation back to one degree limits the list to 436 kits who share DNA with Sue and also with me. That's where I want to start for now, at the center of the target.
Some of them I knew were on my dad's side already. Some of them I didn't know yet. But now because I applied the filter, I can begin to see how we're related. I could also do the opposite and exclude everyone related to SU223, which would show me people exclusively on my mom's side to focus my analysis. This is how I start interpreting my results. I start with what I know. Check out the next video to see the next step. How to identify what you want to know 